Okay, um, so now we're going to talk about what's going to cause shifts in long hour supply. So what we're talking about, we're, we're really talking about, remember this, we're talking about the changes uh, in the potential GDP. So this is, uh, to, to think about this, just remember back to the economic growth chapter. Um, so we're really talking about things that change the ability of your country to produce, the absolute ability of the country to produce. Um, so what we're, really, what we're talking about is things like this. So long hour supply increases. Okay, and generally we're talking about increases. Or we could also be talking about decreases, long hour supply decreases. So the ability of your country to produce things either goes up, and they, in that case, your potential GDP is higher, or it goes down, okay? And again, this is independent of the price level. These are going to be like long-run factors that change this. All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead and, and go through some factors. So so um, the first thing maybe could be categorized as changes in labor, okay? Change in labor, something that affects L. So what's that going to do? Well, let's give some examples. Um, we won't be completely exhaustive here, but we'll go through some examples. So on immigration. So if you have an increase in immigration, uh, for example, then we would expect this to increase our um, potential GDP, right? Okay, because you're going to, it's, you can think of it remembering back to the uh, PPF, right? If we remember back to our PPF, we can think of this as, well, now we have more labor, so our productive ability is higher, okay? So this is the idea. Uh, here we're representing that productive ability as just a um, this vertical line moving to a higher level of production. Okay, so more immigration will get more productive ability. Our, our potential GDP is now higher. Um, let's look at some things that might be uh, lower our productive ability. So we, if we had an aging population, Right, so we get more, uh, a higher proportion of people are going to be like out of the labor force because they're they're retired, they're they're above the retirement age. And I think of a second thing that could decrease the labor um, is the birth rate below the replacement level. So if your birth rate of your country uh, goes below two uh, on average, the fertility rate. Uh, sorry, I should have called this the fertility rate goes below. Uh, approximately two uh, per woman on average in the society. So it's actually 2.1 to account for some deaths, but I'll leave it at two. So if you go below that, then in the long run, you're going to have a shrinking labor force, you're going to have a shrinking population if you don't have immigration, right? So again, that would mean less labor. And it's also going to, if you combine it with number two, it means your population is getting older pretty fast, okay? So these would both cause a decrease in potential GDP in the long run. This is not happening very fast, but over time, this could be happening, okay? Uh, all right, let's go to the second one. Changes in, uh, I'm gonna put K or H together because they're both a kind of investment in the future. So um, if we have, right, we, let's say we have uh, new investment in factories, uh, we have uh, more people go to college and get their bachelors. Um, so these would be both examples of something that's going to increase potential GDP. And then just to give an example of something that would decrease potential GDP, um, a, a tsunami, this would be, for example, happened in part of Japan, tsunami uh, destroys many major many factories not just one or two but maybe like a whole region of the country uh it's got to be something major to to have effect at this level so um then this would lower potential gdp a little now remember there's lots of things happening at the same time so it's possible this is lowering potential gdp but something else is is uh is pushing it back up okay so that's uh, capital and human capital uh, the third one, we'll look at changes in N, that's the natural resources, if you remember. Okay, so uh, two potential ones here that might be relevant is uh, like a change in weather patterns. This could be up or down. So for example, it's, uh, there's this could go up or 
down. It can go either way, depending on the situation. So um, one example is some of the changes in weather patterns related to climate change. Um, there'll be some regions which get uh, which maybe right now are not very good for farming and they might get colder, I mean, warmer or wetter um, and might become better for farming. Um, but then there's also some significant negative effects in other areas that might become too hot or too dry. Or the other thing that could happen pretty much everywhere is um, we can have weather becoming vo more volatile, which is something we're kind of already seeing. And if weather becomes more volatile and unpredictable, then it might cause some really good years, but it also might cause some really bad years, right? So these can all have an effect. If there's an overall change to the big pattern, uh, not just one bad year, um, then this could have an effect on the uh, potential GDP. And then a, a second one is um, the discovery or exploitation of, an, of a new resource. So it's not always necessarily exactly new, um, but this would be like uh, something which wasn't being extracted or used before, and then it's either discovered or, or, or technology, is, or they start to extract it, and then it increases potential GDP because this natural resource is much more available. An example of that might be the uh, in the last maybe 10 years, the, the increased availability of natural gas in the United States. Um, has definitely had a big has had an impact on potential GDP. Okay, and then the final one is uh, changes in tech, right? Technology. So we get if if tech goes up, so we get more better better overall technology, which which is happening all the time. Uh, technology is improving all the time and very rapidly. So then this gets to higher potential GDP. So like we saw then there's the better technology leads to higher potential GDP. So finally, we can just summarize this. So uh, we have our long run air supply curve. And our, um, so we got our long run air supply curve. And in a typical year, uh, usually we'll find uh, it'll be going up. Okay, so generally our ability to produce is almost always going up. It could even be going up during a recession. Okay, so and, and the reason why so usually all right, supply is going up year after year, and say every year. Okay, um, so that's well, we, we can see why we got more labor, we get more human capital, we get more capital, and we got more tech. Okay, but then um, sometimes, but very rarely, so rarely, just in a very special situation, we'll see a decrease in potential GDP. Uh, which we know is the long run average supply. Why did I say rarely? Well, um, typically your labor, your human capital, your capital, and your tech don't just disappear. So yes, you might be in a recession um, where you're not producing very much now, but that didn't change your ability to produce. The workers are still there. The, the factories are still there. You still have the technology. It just means right now you're not producing as much as you can. And we'll talk about that later. Okay, but this situation where your potential GDP actually goes down is, is quite rare. So what would it need? Well, it would need something like uh, uh, maybe um, a huge decrease in labor or uh, capital, or a um, or a major uh, widespread natural disaster of some sort. Okay. Now, if you're a very large, diverse economy, this is really hard to see this potentially happening. Uh, it, unless it's something super widespread like a, a major war where many many people are killed and a lot, large part of your factories and productive infrastructure is destroyed okay that's an example um, if you're a smaller country this is a little bit easier to see um, this could also be something like a like a, you're a small island nation and a major natural disaster um, wipes out your infrastructure it's much easier for a natural disaster to wipe out infrastructure for a small country um, the, a very large country is going to have lots of different regions. So even if there's a problem in one thing, at the national level, the effect may not be very big. And remember, tech is pretty much increasing every year, so that kind of counteracts some of this. But yeah, it's, it's, it could easily happen, especially in a small country. Um, another one would be, it could be kind of happening over time with uh, demographic change. Okay, that would be kind of slowly. Um, tech is probably pushing it forward, but this would be sort of a break on economic growth if uh, if you had um, demographic change where your working age population is getting smaller and smaller because of an aging population 
and a low birth rate. Okay, so that could be kind of happening. So we can also, sometimes this can happen. Okay, so uh, in the next video, we're going to talk about what is the typical situation, and then we'll come into, well, how is uh, aggregate supply going to be different in the short run?